Bees and honey go hand in hand. Honey bees are famous for making this delicious and amazing treat. But did you know that other insects also make honey? Are you new to this channel? I really appreciate you subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Honey is super important for bees because it's their main source of fuel. They make lots of it and store it up in their hive to make sure they always have enough. Here's how they do it. First, they use their long straw-like tongue to suck up sweet nectar from flowers. Then, inside their tummies, they change the nectar into simpler sugars that won't go hard. After that, they pass it on to other worker bees who stash it away in little honeycomb cells made of beeswax. They seal it up with more wax to keep it safe and sound. When they need it, especially in the winter when flowers are rare, they can easily break open the wax and get to their sweet stash. Honey bees come from the Apis group, and even though they're found almost everywhere people live, they originally come from Europe, Africa, and Asia. There are about 7 to 12 different kinds of honey bees and the western honey bee or Apis mellifera bud produces the premier honey you usually see in stores shelves. But guess what? Other bugs make honey too, not just honey bees. Stingless bees, also known as stingless honey bees or melipinines, are primarily found in warm regions like Australia, Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Americas. Although they have stingers, they're very small and can't really be used for defense. Instead, these bees have other ways of protecting themselves, like biting or releasing smelly substances. Some species even have strong jaws that can give painful bites or produce caustic substances from large glands in their jaws. Despite their small size, they're great at making honey and are also used to pollinate crops in some areas. Their honey, called sugar bag, is different from regular honey in taste and texture. Can't get over the difference in the taste. It's really citrusy, isn't it? Yeah, real citrusy and tangy. It's runnier and has a tangy flavor because it contains more water. However, this also means it's more likely to spoil, so it needs to be pasteurized or refrigerated to keep it fresh. Many people find stingless bee honey more enjoyable because it's not as sweet. It's sweet. But it tastes less sweet than the honeybee honey, actually. And has extra health benefits due to higher levels of antimicrobial substances. It's even used as medicine in some African and South American communities for various health issues, although more research is needed to fully understand its medicinal properties. Harvesting sugar bag is an important tradition for indigenous communities in certain parts of Australia, but commercially, Stingless bee honey hasn't been as successful as honey bee honey. This is mainly because stingless bee colonies produce less honey and are harder to harvest. Despite this, there's a growing interest in keeping stingless bees around for their honey, pollination services, and overall well-being. Bumblebees are big and sturdy, with round, fuzzy bodies covered in yellow, orange, and black hair. You can easily spot their dark-colored wings, and their abdomens have a rounded tip. Just like honeybees, bumblebees are crucial pollinators. However, there's one key difference. While most people are familiar with honeybee honey, few have heard of bumblebee honey. Many even doubt if bumblebees make honey at all. Like other pollinators, bumblebees gather pollen and nectar from flowers as they fly around, pollinating plants in the process. The queen bumblebee and her workers feed their larvae with honey they produce. So, yes, bumblebees do make honey, but they mainly use it to feed their young and the queen. Why don't we see bumblebee honey in stores? It all comes down to how bumblebees hibernate. Only queen bumblebees survive the cold by hibernating underground, while honeybees stay active in their colonies, using lots of energy to keep warm. Honeybees store large amounts of honey to sustain themselves through winter, but bumblebees don't need to store as much because they don't hibernate in large colonies. This means there's hardly any honey left for humans to collect. Additionally, since few bumblebee colonies stay put permanently, it's tough to manage them for honey production. The Mexican honey wasp, scientifically known as Brachygastra mellifica, is a social wasp native to Mexico and other countries in South and Central America. These wasps have a slender waist, four wings, and can display bright colors, often with black and yellow patterns. Unlike most wasps, Mexican honey wasps are both gatherers and pollinators, similar to honeybees. They are unique among wasp species because they produce honey, which they store in large paper nests typically built in treetops. When a Mexican honey wasp visits a flower, it uses its proboscis to suck up nectar, which it then regurgitates and converts into honey. The honey produced by Mexican honey wasps is known for its strong scent and tendency to crystallize faster than honey produced by European honeybees. Despite this, it is generally considered safe for consumption and has been harvested by human collectors for over a century in Central and South America. Local indigenous communities highly value these wasps for their honey, 
which serves as a source of food, income, and traditional medicine. Another species of honey-producing wasp is the black paper wasp, or Brachygastra lechiguana. Unlike the Mexican honey wasp, it is carnivorous and preys on butterflies and beetle larvae. Black paper wasps construct paper nests where they store their honey for several years. They are primarily found in Central America and some southern states of the USA. Honeypot ants, also known as honey ants, inhabit dry, desert, or semi-arid regions in Australia, the USA, Mexico, and Africa. Living in extremely arid environments, food can be scarce for these ants. To cope with this, some honeypot ants, known as repletes, serve as living food storage units filled with honey. Honeypot ants collect nectar from various flowers, but they have a preference for a sticky, sweet substance called honeydew, produced by mulga trees and aphids. These ants use their antennae to stroke the aphids, stimulating them to excrete honeydew from their anuses. Worker ants gather this liquid and feed it to the repletes, whose bellies swell and become semi-transparent as they fill with the substance. The abdomens of these repletes can expand many times their normal size, sometimes reaching the size of a grape. Similar to honeybees, these repletes act as food reservoirs for the colony. As the repletes' abdomens become too too large for them to move, they hang from the roof of their nest chamber until other ants require their stored honey. Sadly, once their honey is consumed by the colony, these repletes die. Studies have shown that honey produced by Australian honeypot ants has antibacterial and antifungal properties. This finding aligns with the traditional knowledge of indigenous Australian groups, who have used the ants' honey as a food source and to treat ailments such as colds and sore throats. Laboratory experiments have demonstrated that this honey can protect against the bacterium Staphylococcus aureus which can cause various diseases in humans and, in severe cases, lead to serious health complications and death. However, it does not provide protection against other bacteria. Additionally, the honey exhibits defensive properties against fungi such as Cryptococcus and Aspergillus. And, that concludes today's video, Honey. Have you ever tasted honey sourced from insects other than honeybees? If you enjoyed the content, please show your support by subscribing, liking, sharing, and commenting. Thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one.